buy some food, but dun dun dun, you rummage in your pocket and you forgot your wallet. Mm. You left it at home. So what are you supposed to do? Your stomach is grumbling so hard the entire cafeteria can hear it. So what can you do? You're gonna steal some food. <laughs> Do you think that would be the best choice if you're in that situation? Well, uh, not yeah. not too much. Probably a banana. A banana would not cost that see much. Just that way, right? Yeah, yeah. But, uh, let's yeah. say you have a banana that's only 30 cents. Yeah. I mean, you would probably be thinking, eh, it's only 30 cents, it's right. small. Right, right. Mm -hmm. I should not die for food. Yeah. No, I if, should not die for 30 cents. Yes. And so that's why you seem uh, not one but two bananas. Your banana. Today we will be talking about Immanuel Kant. Not an E, it's an I. <laughs> Immanuel. Yes, German. Mm. So, uh, have any of you heard of him? Yes, yeah, he, was, he was born in Germany have, now. Have you heard of him? Yes. <laughs> yes. He, was, he was born in Germany now. He's, uh, he's under Russia, I guess. Mm -hmm. So he was born in a very eastern part of Germany that was formerly called Konigsberg. So mm -hmm. it's now part of the Kaliningrad Oblast in Russia. And Konigsberg Bridge. Yeah, oil and the That's the topology. So Konigsberg actually has a great history. Not only in math and physics, as you mentioned, but also in wars and history and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And it it was invaded by Russia during World War II, so now it's part of Russia. But let's get more to the factual part. Let's get more to the part about Immanuel Kant and not about World War II. So, Immanuel Kant was born in 1724 in, as I mentioned, East Prussia or Konigsberg, and he lived there most of his life. So, at, in his early life, he was a pietist. Do any of you know what a pietist is? Someone religious? Well, sort of, but can you give me something more specific? A preacher or a saint? No, no? that would be like a... That would be like a pastor. Oh. His, uh, his father and mother was very devoted... Um, Catholics. Mm. Uh, well, that's not the full definition of pietist. And what do you think, Mom? <laughs> Mom, I don't know. <laughs> okay, that's why we are learning philosophy from you, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You are our philosophy teacher. Uh, not really. I'm learning with you guys as well, you know. So, anyway, uh, let's get back to the whole uh, Immanuel Kant thing. So, to be a pietist, means to be pious, which basically means to be kind to others uh, and also to believe in your religion, obviously. Right. And, uh, so technically, Einstein probably wasn't pious. And second of all, um, it was being a strong, vigorous Christian life. It was having a very strong and vigorous Christian life. So like... Right. Uh, most of your life is semi-oriented around Christianity. Right. So, it's been, uh, it was like a really strong form of Christianity, I would believe. So, as a result, Immanuel Kant went to a pietist school. Mm. In 1747, he published his first work. I believe it was called Thoughts of um, uh, thoughts of true forces on living objects. So, uh, uh, thoughts of living for uh, yeah, thoughts of living uh, uh, true forces on living objects. He wanted to become Newton of philosophy. Hmm. Yeah, he was inspired a lot, a lot by Newton. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. In fact, his first work was inspired by Newton as well. We can see clear signs of influence. Well, by Newton in his work. And in fact, his first work, uh, as I said, uh, The Thoughts of True Forces mm -hmm. on Living Objects, was not based on philosophy. It was actually to mediate the argument between Leibniz followers and Newton followers. Mm. Really? Okay, I didn't know that. Wow, that's the news yeah. for me. 
That's the news for me. I knew that he wanted to become Zara. Mm -hmm. I said, you know, philosophy. So. Wow, lots of things learned here. Mm -hmm. And that was written in 1747. Oh, so he was 100 years after Newton. No, only he was, he, he was born. Newton was alive. But Newton was mm -hmm. alive at the time he was born. Yeah. I mean, Newton died when he was three, but still. Yeah. Oh, so. So, anyway. Has, don't you remember Newton died in 1727? Yeah, I know everything about Sir Isaac Newton. Yeah, I mean, he, he, Do you really? Yeah, he, yeah. he Well, yeah. I'm the one named yeah. after him. Oh, okay. You should know, be knowing oh, everything yeah. about Albert Einstein. Well, I fixed all of your mistakes. <laughs> so, anyway, in 1748, he went on a trip around the world. Well, not around the world, but it was probably around the world for somebody who had lived in the same area for 20 years straight and never went outside. Right. So, uh, he was tutoring children. In uh, different areas of the world outside East Prussia. Mm. And so like, he was tutoring children on some beating subject. Mm -hmm. However, he came back to uh, right back home in 1754. After, uh, after 1754, he applied for a job at the Albertine, I believe. Yes. Um, it was, uh, or the Alberta, I don't remember. But it was. A, it was a university that was in East Prussia, or now uh, Kaliningrad. However, in, in 1944 or 1945, it was destroyed by guess who? Oh, by Soviet. Germany. World War Two. By the Soviets. Mm. When the Soviets invaded Germany, they killed or expelled all of their German oh, prisoners of war. Right. They did brutal and cruel things. To the Germans, just as the My Germans God. had done brutal and cruel things to death. Right. The Germans put, uh, the Russians, uh, uh, um, the Soviet Union actually purged all of its German inhabitants, while the Germans put all of the, its Soviet prisoners of war in the same place they put all of the Jews. It was uh, sadly destroyed in 1944 after 400 years. Uh, it was founded in 1544. However, however, That's a shame. I mean, there is so, another oh, college named after Immanuel Kant oh. that is still in Kaliningrad. It was built recently, though. Mm. So, anyway, Immanuel, so Immanuel Kant taught it there for 40 years. 40. Oh, wow. Which is one tenth so of its entire life. He lived in Germany for 20 years and then he teach at that university for 40 years. Um, That's his whole life, almost, right? He was 80 years old at the time of his death. Okay. Oh, so he had 20 years after. Okay. So he retired in 1792. And my, and after that, he started to sadly show uh, many signs of mental decline mm -hmm. as he was getting older. And in 18, on February 12th, 1804, just before his 80th birthday, he died. Immanuel Kant had a lot of great philosophies and ideas, so we're going to take a brief walk through there as well. So, first of all, let me give you all a story, and let me see how you respond. So let's say that you have a really rich friend, and you hear that the mafia is looking for your friend, and you see a monster, uh, and you see a monster outside your door, and he knocks on the door and says, where is your friend? I need to know. Mm -hmm. And he's carrying a gun. So uh, you're obviously intimidated and you know that if you don't tell him, he's probably going to do something bad to you with that gun. So what do you tell him? First, Rifat, what do you think you should tell him? Uh, my friend is at work. Uh, you should probably go to his work. But so then, you know, I will protect my friend because he's actually at my home. So the mafia will go to the work. What if it's Saturday? Killer doesn't know uh, the, anything, so... You, uh, yeah, right? Well, what if it's Saturday and you're uh, not working and the killer isn't stupid? Um, I'd okay. say he has a weekend job. He has two jobs, one for week and one for weekend. It, it'll be hard to... You're play, you know. being pretty inspecific. Okay. But anyway, what do you think you should respond with, Dad? Um, so I would... 
probably think that uh, a small lie, if a small lie can save someone's life, mm -hmm. then I would probably say he's not at home. I have not seen him. You should look for him somewhere. Yeah. Somewhere outside, yes. right? Yes. Yeah, that's what I meant. Mom, what do you think? Mm, that's <laughs> like the idea you say it's not at home. Well, it seems one guy um, is just trying to think outside of the box and oh, feeling really I, hard. I, I get and it. the other two are saying hmm, we can let them outside. I, I'll just add the QM. Okay. So? Okay. And the other two are trying to lead the killer outside. But is that the best option? Reconsider your choices. And the, indeed, the normal person's impulse would be to say, I don't know, he's outside. However, consider this first before you act. Let's say, while he was waiting in your room, he was curious about who was at the door. So he peeked uh, into the door. And then, uh, when he saw the a mobster asking where he was with the gun in his hand, mm -hmm. then mm, he ran away, far away. And while the mobster is looking outside, the mobster runs in, right into your friend. And you know what happens next. So, by telling the truth, you can let, uh, or by telling the truth, or at least what you think is the truth, you can actually see your friend's life. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty, 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 so lying. Made pretty strong uh, philosophy here. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. if, if you... So lying, would, it would be worse than the truth. Oh, but I thought if you lie, you can save his, his life. <laughs> well, sometimes you can't. Now let me give you two, uh, two more examples. Not of this philosophy, but for others. So that you can understand the concept. Mm -hmm. Now let's say you're in a college cafeteria. You'll be very familiar with this one you have. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you're really, really hungry. Wow. And, and so you want to buy some food, but dun dun dun, you want it in your pocket and you forgot your wallet. Mm. You left it at home. So what are you supposed to do? Your stomach is grumbling so hard the entire cafeteria can hear it. So what can you do? He's going to steal some food. <laughs> do you think that would be the best choice if you're in that situation? Well, uh, not, yeah. not too much. Probably a banana. A banana would not cost that much. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, let's yeah. say you have a banana that's only 30 cents. Yeah. I mean, you would probably be thinking, it's only 30 cents, it's right. small. Right, right. And I should not die for food. Yeah. No, I should if... not die for 30 cents. Yes. And so that's why you steal uh, not one but two bananas. Your bananas. So Immanuel Kant used a, a little t thing called universalization to kind of, well, <clears throat> determine what would be good and what is, what is good and what is bad. So, for example, you're the only one stealing the banana. Mm -hmm. But let's say you and all of your friends need to steal a banana because uh, your friends are very hungry too. Assuming you even have them in college, very rare to get one or two of them. However, now <coughs> there are even less bananas. And the <coughs> bananas stolen individually start adding up. That's bananas. And... Then, let's imagine the entire cafeteria stealing bananas. Everybody's stealing from each other. People are fighting and hurting each other over oh. the bananas. And the entire cafeteria is out of stock. While inside the kitchen, people are fighting each other over how to make more bananas. It's bananas! It seems like everybody's gone bananas as well. So... so fact of the matter is, if you cannot universalize it, then... Then it's the wrong moral action. It is a wrong moral axis. Mm. At least in a manual country. So now, now, let's, yeah, so so like a similar thing is let's say uh, you're a part of the mafia and they tell you to uh, murder this really uh, rich public official. Mm -hmm. So, uh, once you, uh, you assassinate him, you get all of the cash and you can live a happy life. Just like some normal uh, random guy could live a happy life. 
uh, with or without, um, I don't know, assassinating a big public official. So, however, but you want, yeah, you want the privilege of, uh, you want the privilege of uh, assassinating someone and still living a happy life to be restricted to only you and the mafia around you. You and your mafia want to be the only exception, and you want everybody oh. else to not murder each other. Because if everybody else murders each other, it's going to be absolute chaos. The human race will go extinct within oh. a few weeks. And what are you going to do with the money? Yeah. Yeah, what are you so going to do with the money? The exception is the opposite of universalization, right? Yeah. No. But, 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 consider, so, consider this. Okay. Since he wants to be the exception, everybody actually wants to be the exception. In fact, the only thing stopping a lot of people from actually uh, doing, uh, uh, the only thing stopping a lot of people from actually um, uh, killing or assassinating no, someone, no. it that's about uh, what I was about to say. Mm -hmm. You do the crime, you do the time. They're afraid of jail time or persecution. And that's really the only thing uh, restricting many, many people. Well, not all people. Some people want to be more like the philosophers, for example. But many people uh, are only restricted by the law, and they are only held back by the law from doing it. Mm -hmm. So, and that uh, so the exception will sometimes eventually becomes the norm. If everybody wants to be uh, the exception, yeah. the exception will eventually become the norm. And if the exception is bad, that can't be allowed, can yeah. it? And I have a real life example. You want to hear it? Sure. In the COVID nineteen, do you know what the exception was? What? Uh, cheating on the online exams. <laughs> and that became no, no. It became regular everywhere. So that means almost every student the fell honest, behind. The honest guy, yeah, the honest guy. Yeah. Almost every student fell behind. The, the best student did not. Yeah. Get the reward for uh, for whatever he or she right. deserved. And now since it's in person, the tables are turned. The people who are yeah. getting A plus in their mind, suddenly they cannot solve the so basic now, thing. Now, now that uh, reimposes uh, Immanuel Kant yeah. philosophy, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Under under any circumstances, when he, even you know that you're not gonna get caught. Yeah. Don't 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 don't, mm -hmm. don't lie. Don't cheat. Don't steal. And what? And don't cheat. Don't uh, murder. And don't murder. 